Welcome to the Creators here at Sum City. Coming to you every Tuesday and Friday. Extended conversations that build community making for creators videos, by art making what you make. Today on The Creators, John Herman, media maker, writer, printmaker, blogger, educator, and founder of New Hampshire Media Makers, the meetup established before meetups were a thing. So subscribe to our channel, comment, and most importantly, watch Building With Us as we build community with you. Welcome back to The Creators, and here, special guest, wonderful guest, Mr. John Herman. John, good to see you. Good to see you. John, the creator of uh, New Hampshire Media Makers, mm -hmm. um, once a month on Sundays, uh, media makers get together and talk about what they're working on. And uh, But John is a creator of Longstand, writer and also a teacher. So, John, uh, the question we often begin with is, is, are you a creator and does that have significance to you? Yeah, it does, because I don't think that I have an expertise in anything specific. <laughs> so when I heard creator, I was like, that's exactly what I am. <laughs> um, so I actually self-identify. I think um, I do a lot of different things, but sometimes, you know, when that inner critical voice <laughs> Is talking I I critique myself that I haven't spent enough time with any one thing um, even uh, we just got a, a 88 key electric keyboard like a an old beater electric piano put it in the middle of our living room to have our kids check it out and I'm now like learning songs but I'm like oh I should have done this 30 years ago <laughs> like so I have that critical like What's uh, what's always impressed me about you is from when I first met you, um, you were um, looking at documentary film yep. and um, how you jumped into it, your excitement at, at, at doing something yep. uh, and, and how you would jump in and, and do the physical thing, get a, pick up a camera. Yep. And uh, has that, is that part of your aesthetic, part absolutely, of your, who absolutely. you are? So um, I was, when I was young, um, the type of kid that would be making movies on the weekends with friends, and I think a lot of filmmakers start there. Um, I just never gave it up, and I was doing it right through college and beyond college. My camera was more expensive than my car, and <laughs> um, and then you know the web happened, and that kind of changed things. How for old me. were you when the web started um, expanding and being a thing? A thing. Um, I was a few years out of grad school. And uh, I mean, the web, the web was a thing, but web video was really becoming a possibility and having series and long form things on the web to view. Um, so during college, I worked for NHPTV, um, um, the, our public access, uh, public television local affiliate. And I still had like that background. I was a camera operator. I was a production. So um, when left to my own devices, I just started making documentaries. And after the, you know, web video became a possibility, I, I took my camera and realized I could, you know, release three minutes of video every week and gain a bigger audience than working a year on something much longer and then paying to get into film festivals and then, you know, maybe 50 people see your film and one person on the way out is like, oh, you're the director. Good job. And like, that's my year long experience. So the web became very attractive for, um, you know, distributing my, my video stuff. Um, and eventually I was like, you know, this camera is, is a hindrance. <laughs> uh, so things got smaller and, you know, I became more mobile, but, um, you know, I, that's, that's just one thing I, that it is very true that everything that I attempt, I just, uh, I just get into it. I, I don't go to a concert or go to an art gallery or, and just say like, wow, that was really good. I like, go, I want to do that. <laughs> so, and I figure it out and I do it for a little bit. So 
There are some long running things. I've been doing improvisational theater for over 20 years. And some of the tenets of that and some of the philosophy that goes into that art, I think has probably influenced a lot of my other things of just, you know, really listening and um, kind of that no fear mentality of getting into something. Um, collaboration is incredibly strong um, in a lot of my projects, a, a strong aspect. Collaboration and um, what about the writing impulse and uh, the uh, the notion of an auteur of of, of of authoring something of grabbing a hold of something yeah. and bringing it to to an audience uh, and uh, so of those of those threads the writing how important is the writing and the and authorship to yeah you? I've always been a writer um, I am. I've published, I mean, just the nitty gritty background is that I've published a bunch of short stories, but uh, I have three novel manuscripts that I haven't sold yet. Um, and I'm rewriting one right right now, was doing so last night. And that's just kind of, if you're a writer, um, that's the process. You just keep going. Um, I think, I don't know if it's the authorship that attracts me so, or, or so much as the storytelling. I think narrative very much is appealing to me. Um, whether I'm writing a novel, I've, I've written a bunch of stage plays, and I've written a long form one year um, mystery podcast. Um, Disappearance, right? Yep, yep. Um, so you're right that like a lot of the stuff that I do is narrative. Um, and I think that's probably my love of storytelling. Like I am currently Every, every few years, I reread the books that inspired me as a kid, um, just to get that that sense of wonder back. And I'm currently reading *The Neverending Story* by Michael End, mm -hmm. um, and, which is about storytelling. And I'm like, wow, this was really influ influential to me when I was 12. Yeah. I can see it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is it about uh, the storytelling uh, about storytelling that, that grabbed your interest? I don't know. Um, I don't know if I'm, I'm self-aware enough to know what it is about storytelling, but it's always been attractive to me. Um, I am, I mean, in improvisational theater, you are collaboratively telling a story, basically. And, but for me, it's very much like you are publishing live, like you are really working together. It is not a gimmicky, jokey thing for me. It's, it's really about the storytelling. Um, there is something magical about telling a satisfying story uh, or hearing a satisfying story. And I think that that sense of uh, wonder and satisfaction after you have created something with an arc um, that delivers at the end, mm -hmm. um, whether you're documentary filmmaking or... Uh, any of any of those those things. I was talking with my yeah. wife about Fanny and Alexander, the Ingmar Bergman, one of his last films. Yeah. I think it might have been his last film, and um, the one of the central characters talks about a theater that that he had created and, and creating this world inside of their world, which is which is their world. Yeah. Uh, and that, that that to me is a lot of the love of of narrative of uh, narrative and collaboration of coming together to. Uh, to, to tell a story of something happening, yep. seeing something happening. Thinking of things happening, I mean, one of the other key elements is this New Hampshire Media Makers, which yeah. brings together other creators to talk about what they're working on. Yep. Um, why did you spend the time to uh, do New Hampshire Media Makers, and why do you think it's, it's taken off such? Yeah, uh, it started with that whole notion that like I really am sincerely inspired by other people's um, creations and arts and you know stories so you know it's it's nice to say that but I'm like serious <laughs> so I would go to meetups um, creative meetups and uh, creative tech meetups creative anything that had people coming that were excited about new ideas that would be what I would do on the weekend. So I was going to them in Boston, and I would I started going to some in New York, and but I was living in New Hampshire. And at some point, and maybe it's just um, comes with age, I was like, 
what am I doing? <laughs> I'm racking up mileage. I'm very inspired, but um, I just one day said, you know what? I'm going to create one kind of on my front step. Um, I live in Newmarket, so I decided that I was going to host one in Newmarket to see if anybody showed up. And it's been going for many years now. Um, I don't know. I think we're nearing 12 years. Wow. Or, so, and people just keep coming. And as a movement, the Media Maker movement as a meetup has come and gone to a certain extent. It started in Boston and it grew through many different cities and internationally. So these meetups were happening and they were, you know, there's cross connections, but they've, you know, retreated. I've, there's so much accessibility online that the kind of face to face uh, is, you can, you know, literally speak to someone uh, face to face online. Yeah. So uh, the, also the intellectual property aspect of it was very interesting. I think in cities like New York um, and maybe London, people would come to this meetup and they'd sit around with their exciting project and they'd be like, I have something really exciting, but I can't talk about it because of, you know, intellectual property and all of those things. And in New Hampshire, you know, we're very just supportive of each other. So people come, they come with excitement, they come with questions. Um, at the meetup, you just share uh, a couple minutes of what you're doing and people get inspired by each other. And no one is like, I'm not telling you my idea because I'm afraid you're going to steal it. It's more, I'm telling you my idea because I'm really excited by it. And then people appreciate that and they reciprocate. So we have just cultivated a really cool collective of, of idea people and people who do things, including yourself. Um, so I feel like I've kind of attracted like a, a fly trap, some of the more creative like movers and shakers around the state. And it's, it's neat because it's on my proverbial doorstep. Mm-hmm. What is it that's uh, getting, well, actually, two, two things. One thing I wanted to pick up on is the idea of a face-to-face, -face, uh, not a virtual face-to-face, -face, but a, you know, a physical place. It's at Crack Skulls, a coffee right. shop in, uh, in Newmarket. Yeah. Um, you are somebody who is digitally aware. You just mm -hmm. inherently use these tools, uh, from my perspective, extremely well at a very high Thank you. level and engage them in an artistic way, in a playful way, in a professional way. Mm -hmm. um, and But here this meetup, which is about people doing that, because it is about uh, focused on new media, New yeah. Hampshire media makers, uh, yet it is a physical location. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, and, and you don't make a point of, you know, you say, hey, bring a camera if you want to hype something, put it on the air, do a 360, yeah, yeah. whatever oh, you want to totally. do. But, it, but you haven't built that into the concept. You know, you don't live broadcast it. You don't right. try to connect right. with other people who aren't there. I mean, right. it's just not that you don't want to. It's just, you know, it's yeah. just a meetup for people to be there. Yeah, I think I, there, I have flirted with things like that before. Uh, there's something about if you give people an out, then they don't come. Like, mm -hmm. and I feel like if I live streamed, if I, if I had gone that route, the, the tactile people sitting down and having a cup of coffee and a muffin and talking about their creative thing on at the beginning of the week and then setting off for the rest of their week, I think that might have been lost. So, and that may be just a judgment that I have, but, um, I feel, I mean, for example, I have been asked many, many, many times do you want to bring your media makers meet up to this place? We'll do this, this, and this. And I have succumbed to that request a couple times. Um, but honestly, my response nowadays is like, you can do it. <laughs> like, just like there can be a million of these meetups. Like, go into your community and say, hey, I'm going to meet at this time. And if you've got creative ideas, you want to hang out for an hour, come out. And I, I bet people are, these people are in every town. Um, I've just been doing it for a while, so yeah, they're they're, they're here in this town. That's Absolutely. why we formed this place. Yeah. Different, different, uh, but similar, similar impulse. Well, uh, speaking of, you know, what's what's inspiring you? What's inspiring you, John Herman? Would you would you? Yeah, I say you brought some. Uh, some yeah, so some pieces here. So right now, um, I am performing improv theater all the time. Um, in September, I become artistic director of the of an organization that I kind of co-helped create 15 years ago. But I've been just a performer for a little bit now. Um, but I'm going to become the AD again. So I have, within coming next month, 
I'll be directing shows at Seacoast Repertory Theater in Portsmouth, Jupiter Hall in Manchester, Hatbox Theater in Concord. And these are monthly residencies, so it's going to take us right through the spring. Um, and then we have one-off shows at like the Star Theater in Kittery. Um, we have classes, like three levels of classes that are going on in three different cities. And so it's, it's been kind of crazy. Um, so right now, like on the drive over, I'm going to be start, I'm going to start directing our first show for Seacoast Repertory Theater, which is going to be an interactive uh, take on Ancient Creek Theater. So we're going to get some, we're going to interview some audience members, and then we're going to play out um, kind of an ancient Greek tragedy inspired by audience members' lives. So it's a little tongue in cheek, but there's going to be a chorus, there's going to be togas, and uh, so I'm pondering that right now. Um, in November, I am acting at the Players Ring Theater, in addition to all the improv stuff, but it's scripted. Uh, a piece that I wrote uh, about the time I almost went to space, and so it is a it's a story of failure, um, but it's it's funny, you know. Um, when I almost went to space, um, someone said, it's, it's going to be fine, you know. Uh, in five years, you'll be, you know, acting in a one-man show about this story. And I was like, no, th that's absolutely never going to happen. So it's very funny that it's exactly, and, you know, people know me more than I know myself sometimes. <laughs> um, so there's that. Um, I'm working on that manuscript. But the, the things that I brought... Um, are the tactile things. A lot of the things that I, I work on are in my head. And it's about taking things in my head, the stories or things like that, and either putting them on the stage, putting them on the screen, um, putting them in text for like a, a manuscript. But a little, we purchased a new house, uh, moved across town in New Market, and uh, we had a lot of wall space. So I was like, I want, now, you know, we're going to be in this house for a while because um, A, we can't move, we can't afford to move. Uh, B, um, I've always wanted to do that. Fill my walls with local art. So we, uh, uh, you know, you purchase one piece of art and then we couldn't afford to frame it because framing mm. is crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I got this crazy idea that I would just uh, teach myself an art and then I would sell art to make money just to buy local art. So mm -hmm. I'd create this like cycle. So this is how my brain works apparently. And so I started watercoloring with my kids. And I start, I posted some of my watercolors online. Um, I had done some watercolors like years ago and I was like, I could do this, I could learn more. And I sold, I, I, an artist contacted me and said, I would love a couple of those watercolors, um, but I wanna trade. And I was like, of course, why didn't I even think of this? Better than selling, better than then buying, I'm gonna trade with other artists. So I sat down with a block print maker. Uh, so, you know, carve into wood or linoleum, put it into a press, make some prints. Uh, it takes a long time, it's very meditative. Um, and I sat down with him and I was just so inspired. I was like, this is cool. And I asked him a million questions and at the end of our, you know, little meetup where we then traded art, he was like, you like this more than I do. <laughs> um, do you want to meet again? And I'll give you some tools and I'll show you how it's done. Mm. So um, for the past year uh, on the off time I have, and sometimes, you know, alongside, uh, alongside my kids, I draw stuff, carve it into wood and linoleum, and I, I put into a press. Um, there is a old block print um, maker who passed away a uh, year and a half, two years ago in my town and his widow gifted me a like a reproduction 15th century style Gutenberg little press like mm. Johann Gutenberg so I feel mm -hmm. like crank it so anyway yeah. um, there's my son he's uh, sleeping wow. <laughs> and it's uh, what he's dreaming about mm. so I like carved it um, I, for a while I was very into spacey sort of things and so, and uh, my manuscript is called Here Comes the Moon, uh, which is a, it's like a middle grade science fantasy adventure. So Fantastic. I've been, I'm, I've clearly had like moon and spacey things. I've gone, uh, I've started exploring text, which, you know, I feel like people did this, everybody tries this out in high school and somehow I missed it. <laughs> uh, so I have the like, I'm like a zealot, um, I'm just very excited by 
not being in my brain and I have to spend an hour sitting there carving and it's imperfect because I'm a perfectionist. So everything is just so imperfect. Every single print is slightly different than the mm. other and I see a million perfection imperfections uh, but you know the response from other people is this is great. <laughs> so it's very it's a very it's helped me with all of my other arts to become a printmaker. Imperfections. Um, you mentioned you know failing at going to space, but but um, yeah, you didn't get the space, but you went through an amazing process. Uh, the imperfections that I see there look like you know central to the art itself. Yeah. Uh, without knowing, you know, precisely what your intention was, right? But, but in, and just getting a, a, a glance at these, um, the the beauty of 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 being in the process and then discovering the criteria that you have for what is good and right. how to do that. I mean, I draw and carve for weeks and then print in an hour. So I'm doing all the preparation and then the actual like printing. Is very short, and I I am not good enough to know what I'm about to make. <laughs> I think I know what it's going to look like, and mm -hmm. I I haven't been right yet. So mm -hmm. it's been really exciting. Um, and you know, there are some printmakers who design their things online and like print out and then print right onto their piece of wood and like carve. And I'm I'm really I'm I'm pretty old school, so I'm I'm dreaming, I'm sketching, I'm kind of sketching it on the wood, and then I go for it. Speaking of dreaming, anybody mentioned the George Melier, uh, the, uh, the especially with your your son's dream, um, the uh, seen his his first films, the uh, 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 Flight to the Moon, you know, yeah, yeah. to the Moon, oh yeah, and uh, some of the earlier ones of the magician and, and dreaming of going to these places and I, transporting. I have us. only seen the what is it Voyage to the Moon or what, whatever. Yeah. The, I've, I'm, I'm, I want to check out. His Take other a look stuff. at some of those early ones. Lots yeah. of them on. Lots of them on YouTube, um, and so you have a uh, now you have uh, a house potentially full of these blocks. Right. Prints. So now, oh yeah, see, I'm a babbler, Bill. So you gotta <laughs> me too. You gotta focus me. Um, yeah. Now people come to my house and they're like, either you guys really like this style, or these are all done by one person, <laughs> and of course it's me. Um, and I'm not like just, you know, filling my walls with my stuff, but like my wife will like something and she puts it on the mantle and then another one on the mantle and another one on the, <laughs> so like we have to start taking down some of my stuff. And, um, I've only had one show in which I like sold some stuff and I am just, you know, it's really exciting. I've been calling myself some kind of artist for many years, but it still was qu quite the thrill this year to have complete strangers spend money <laughs> on something I've made and I don't know who they are. I don't know where that art went mm -hmm. and that blows my mind a little bit. And I mean, I, that must, you know, you must feel the same way. Like when you, you put something out there and someone comments on it and you're like, I have no idea who that person is and they watched it and, you well, know. One of the things I was just thinking about is you have so many overlapping projects, certainly in mm -hmm. very different genres. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the one it, it strikes me that um, you know some of it is being a, in a sense a performer that mm -hmm. you can be sort of hired or asked to do these various things, but you're also leading these things. They're part of your aesthetic, part yep. of what you are creating. Um, does the ability to work in a very different way if you're I don't know, doing an improv theater group, mm -hmm. very different from doing a block print. Mm -hmm. uh, thinking of artists, you know, Picasso had his blue period, or you think of a friend of mine who's a photographer, she's working in a very particular kind of feel of in black and white on film. Yeah. And so that's where her professional development is. And, you know, you're talking about your prints. There, there's something particular that you're working on yep. and developing. Um, but yet your professional work is having you jump from this thing and then that thing, or not jump, but you're, yeah. those are other projects that you're developing at the same time. Does that help you as a creator? Does it give you something different than you might if you were uh, hired to do those blocks for people all over the world? Oh, I don't know. Like, I can't even imagine, um, uh, you know, 
I definitely go through phases with the things that I'm doing. I, it all goes back to I'm not an expert in anything. <laughs> Hopefully, my, through my babbling over the past you know 20 minutes, I've like shown that I do do a lot of stuff. You do, but um, uh, I do. I, I I feel like I'm not an expert. Um, in terms of yeah, if I understand your question correctly. Well, if you do, let me know. Very much. <laughs> uh, it does cross feed. Like yes. you know, me doing something with one one medium is definitely informing my other mediums, and I go through phases. Um, right now, uh, there, improv theater is a very weird thing in that it's always been kind of like the weird stepsister of traditional theater. Um, you know, in major cities, there are improv clubs that are huge, and they feed all of you know, TV sitcom culture comes from improv and uh, late night television comes from improv and all of these people are start as improvisers. Um, but, you know, the, the trends have been actually quite stagnant um, nationally for about 15 years, but something new is happening that I'm really, really into, which is narrative uh, genre um, stuff. Yes. <laughs> so the, the fact that I am doing, I'm not doing Whose Lines It Anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm doing an ancient Greek theater. Yes. That is different than what I would have been doing or mm -hmm. anybody would have been doing in any major city yeah. 10 years ago with this art. And this is happening everywhere. People are coming up with new ideas and they're, they're creating narratives and there's something happening there. You know, some of it is the uh, the mill town. Uh, I know that some of your work has been connected to the uh, the mill space across yep. uh, in in Newmarket. Yeah, and certainly here in Summersworth, that history of the the mill, which just you know is completely shut down. That yeah. that that industrial world is is gone. Right. Not the energy behind it, but that as a viable industry. There yeah. is no industrial. Yeah base in the way that it was here yeah. with employing thousands, tens yeah. of thousands of workers. Yeah. Um, so I'm wondering if our, uh, our lack of industry um, is also maybe our opportunity for these narrative stories to start developing. Absolutely. Um, you're right that I, I do a lot of stuff in the mill space in Newmarket, which is repurposed. You know, it was a, it was a mill. It was in a very industrial environment that's been, you know, cleaned up a little bit, and there's now a stage there. There's a gallery. There's a, so there is still the vibe. The history is there, and I think that some of these towns that are throughout New England, um, they have for too long looked at their these old buildings as like what what once was. <laughs> Um, and I think that that's no longer, you know, especially here in the seacoast where, you know, mill after mill is being repurposed and it's not just, um, you know, turning into condos. It's turning, there are so many different things going and being done with these spaces. I think that spirit has always been there and finally people have been given the opportunity to harness it and like do something with it. And to circle back to, um, New Hampshire media makers and yeah. fostering certainly just oh that's really you know tell me what you're working on and just this sense of let's let's not necessarily financially support one another but just be excited about what other people are creating yeah uh, what I'm really interested in is the creative economy and yeah. how certainly in my teaching you know teaching students how to use these tools to create something yeah. uh, that's part of a very real economy that's here and oh, yeah. uh, that that's what I find exciting about the work that you're doing. You're unleashing this creativity in others. Oh, I see it. The arts and culture, you know, set is definitely driving a, a large portion of the economy in our in our area. Absolutely. And media makers itself, just as a microcosm, oh, if if we've done this for you know twelve years or so, uh, I've seen marriages come out of that meetup. I've seen businesses, I've seen you know many, many, many projects, collaborative projects. Um, uh, the, the fact of the matter with just getting back to like creating and if you spend time and you're thoughtful and you're, you're passionate and you're, you really are interested in something and, you, and then you stick with it, things, you're building something. Um, you know, it, it starts when you're young or like when I was young, I pick up a camera, I didn't quite know what I was doing, I'm making movies with friends 
and then you know I work in television and I do some filmmaking and I but I think that happens with anything like you pick something up and then often we put it down <laughs> but if you just held on to it and like kept creating um, you're, you can build an institution. I, I think I've, I think I've learned that. And I think you've learned that. <laughs> um, you know, it's funny before you hit record. Um, for those who are watching, Bill's like critiquing. He's like he doesn't quite know, but the knowledge that he has is so evident. <laughs> um, I think you know creators are not self-aware <laughs> about their own you know knowledge. They only I, I think sometimes we see what we don't know. Yeah. instead of what we do know and then everybody else sees what we know <laughs> and i think uh you know great creators they whether they know what they're doing or not they they do because they're doing it yeah they just intuitively go for that thing and they try i think great creators try to avoid what they're not good at or get right. somebody else to help them out <laughs> yeah yeah um, um yeah oh i have a ton of projects that i i probably started and i was like hmm it's not going anywhere. I'm not, not that interested. And then I go and do something else. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I hit something that I, I, I like and inspires me to, to learn more, then, you know, we all get good at things eventually. Um, so the, you know, you didn't go to space. At least I, I didn't read about you going to space. I did not space. go to space. But, uh, but we have a prospect. Which will be depicted <laughs> on the stage. I'm looking forward to it. By lack of going to space. I'm looking forward to it. What uh, what do you see as so you said that was a, that was a failure as a uh, as a space mission? Yep. Um, what do you see as success? Oh boy. Um, hmm. I mean, is it going to the moon or you know going to the metaphorical moon? Whether that's <laughs> collecting an Academy Award or a YouTube award or uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I think you know it it comes back to I. Having that satisfying ending is what we're all seeking. Mm. <laughs> so it's it's mm -hmm. if you can close the, if you can close the deal in a satisfying way. I've hosted I do a lot of hosting of events as well, um, and you know again we're not self aware. But then I'm asked to teach a public speaking for the arts class at New Hampshire Institute of Art, and I'm like, oh, I guess I am a public speaker as well. Uh, so I host a lot of these events and. Some of the, the events that I host, the arts and culture events that I host, are as satisfying just being the host as the art that I'm creating. And I realize that it's because of that, you know, there's an ending. People are walking out going like, that was a fine evening of whatever it was, an entertainment award ceremony mm -hmm. or whatever. And, you know, I get my kicks out of, you know, hosting a, a great event as well. Mm -hmm. So there's something in there. There's something about that satisfaction that satisfaction that like we've shared something here mm. um, whether it's uh, I, I was very involved in the 48 hour film project movement for a while like I literally made a film at least a film a year for 10 years uh, within 48 hours like choosing a weekend choosing one of the contests weekends and that was great for me <laughs> because you know you show up with friends it was like I was 12 again on Sunday night, you know, the movie's done and everybody walks away going, wow, we shared something here. This was very creative and fulfilling. And I think that that is probably where, what well, like success is. Everybody walks away going like, I've, I've time well spent, we've collaborated, it's fulfilling, this was great. Even if it's, we're, we're collaborating as audience members by cheering or, you know, mm -hmm. whatever it is. I can't beat that as a uh, closing yeah. to this <laughs> session of the creators, John Herman. Great to speak with you here, and, and great to know you. Great to be a collaborator with you yeah. on uh, in this uh, on this forum. And, and here's to uh, some great endings. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, uh, and I just want to point out over your shoulder, yeah. uh, George Lalarge, uh, local uh, artist. He was a um, he was a uh, electrician in Nashua. And retired to this area and became a prolific painter. Wow. Fantastic painter. Uh, just passed away last January. And we're uh, grateful to have uh, George Lalarge to oh, show that is over such your a, shoulder. That's such an interesting statement on the painting. I don't know if people can read the text, but it says, Happy birthday to us and by us. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm.